Oh. <laughs> oh my god, you guys, I look like I got beat up. What the heck? I think I forgot I was wearing eyelashes. Holy crap. Dane, be right back. <sighs> okay, we are back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our channel. Ni hao. Ni hao. You good? I hope you're doing great. I am so excited because Zoe is going to be attending a Bumo Brain class. And in case you don't know what Bumo Brain is, it is an online service. It's like membership based and you just pay a monthly fee and there are live classes online at all times for your little ones when you're busy during COVID at home, not sure how to help with their development or work on their brains. And I've always been really intrigued by Bumo Brain. I first heard about it through obviously the most inspirational CEO of the company. She's a co-CEO, I believe. Her name is Chriselle Lim. If you don't know who she is, you must live under a rock. Hello. She is raising bilingual children. Yes, she's married to, I think, a Taiwanese guy. And she's Korean herself. And so she'll sometimes post videos of her two little cutie pie daughters speaking Chinese or speaking Korean. And so they, I can tell clearly they're exposed to different languages at home. So she started Boomer Brain with her friend, Joan. They're both co-founders of Boomer Brain. And they'll send you, literally send you boxes of materials of activities that they'll be doing during the classes. So it's very hands-on and very engaging from the videos that I have seen. The classes are always age specific, which is so key. I believe that the monthly fee for subscription is 49 a month, which if you think about it, if it's giving you some breaks in between a day as a stay-at-home mom and also making them smarter, I think it might be worth it. A lot of their classes start older, especially the foreign language program, which is the one that we're trying out today. And I'm super excited to see how it goes. I'm about to go pick Zoe up a little bit early from daycare. I think they are located in California. So uh, a class at noon over there is a class at 3 p.m. for us, which works out because Zoe is a daycare today. So I'm just going to go pick her up earlier and then I'm going to set the TV up and then we're just going to watch it together. See if she picks up any Mandarin from it. Ooh, I just got a class confirmation. Actually, it's more of a reminder. It says Ni Hao Bumo Bodies. It's on Monday, March 8th. You know what? This is so clutch because every mom needs this. <sighs> Nobody can keep up with these things. It's an hour before the class and also comes with a Zoom link. So good. So detailed. Love it. Oh, and I just logged into the student portal, which I didn't realize existed until just now. And it comes with so many worksheets. Each week they send out a couple activities and you can print these out or you can just watch it on their videos. It looks like they are targeting with traditional characters, but also with pinging, which is... An interesting mix of the two. We had two other classmates in a Zoom room with us, so just a total of four participants in this class. This made it feel very intimate and personal and allowed both the teacher and the students to have direct interactions with one another. Our Bumo teacher started with an icebreaker, simple concepts, presenting two items and asking the students which one they liked. Boats better or do you like trains? As I mentioned before, this specific class that we had signed up for was meant for toddlers between ages 3 to 4. I assume the other students in the class were at least 3, given how advanced their language skills were. I signed up even though I knew Zoe would be too young to participate because I wanted to see if this is something I would recommend to my bilingual mamas and friends like yourselves. <sighs> It's funny because I could tell the teacher was trying her very best to involve Zoe, 
even though she's only speaking one syllable words at this point and has limited speech sounds. What about you, Zoe? Do you like the train or the boat? After the icebreaker, we went around and did classroom greetings. I really loved that the teacher incorporated not just our typical day-to-day -day verbal greetings, but also those pre-linguistic communication skills into this activity. At this point, given that Zoe has a way shorter attention span than those in her class, because of her age, she was starting to get a bit wiggly. I know what you're thinking. We just started the class. <laughs> I know, but since my goal was just to get to know what Boomo Brain was all about, I expected this and just ran with it. The teacher then went over classroom rules, then went into the activities. I enjoyed that the teacher went back and forth between English and Chinese. It created a full bilingual experience. Although I would say it also depends on where your child is with their minority language level. This class felt more appropriate for little ones raised primarily with English during their first two years of life, and maybe Chinese was exposed here and there. So the teacher relied on English to introduce and explain concepts first, and then presented the target words in Chinese. If you're currently raising your child with minority language only, this class may simply be a space for socialization with a bilingual input rather than foreign language exposure. But again, I always say exposure is exposure. Especially if you live in an area where it is difficult to connect with others who also speak your minority language. Boomo Brain Foreign Language Program is the perfect space for your little one to make friends in an environment where speaking the minority language with one another is normalized. I had to be very present throughout the class just to keep Zoe a little bit engaged because clearly she isn't at the age where staring at a small screen with small faces inside will hold her attention. But I would still consider the class very age appropriate because the other students in the class were very engaged and responding back and forth with the teacher. Something that did keep Zoe very engaged though was the graphics the teacher used throughout the activities. The teacher shared her screen throughout the class and each activity had animated characters involved to give little ones a visual of what the teacher was talking about. Zoe's favorite thing out of this class was the movement break. <laughs> so clutch. Nothing helps with grabbing little one's attention more than putting on a song and making them dance. It was so cute, Zoe loved it, and the other students loved it. I'm so glad the teacher incorporated that into the class. Another thing I loved that the teacher did was that she used her body to explain certain concepts. We were going over big, da, and little, xiao, where the teacher showed a series of animated characters on the screen in comparison to one another, asking the students whether each one was big or little. And every time she said big, da, she would raise her hands big to provide more visuals. And every time she says small, xiao, she would bring her fingers together to show what small meant. This really engaged Zoe. Whether she knew what the teacher was talking about or not, it got her to imitate the words. Overall, I would say it was a well-structured class. The teacher is very clear with her goals and incredible at teaching the concepts. The only thing that stopped me on my tracks a bit, and I honestly didn't even want to bring attention to this at first, but I figured if it made me take a second, it's probably worth mentioning. It could be because she was going back and forth between English and Chinese, but I noticed a slight, and when I say slight, I mean very slight accent in her Chinese almost like an American Chinese accent. Not that her tones were off or anything, just something that I noticed. I know some people are big on looking for native speakers when it comes to exposing their children to a minority language. However, realistically speaking, Zoe will probably grow up with a bunch of friends who speak Chinese with an American accent, simply because they are growing up in America. That was our Bumo Brain foreign language program experience. I can see myself registering Zoe for this maybe once she's a bit older for socialization purposes. 
Given that I plan on exposing her intentionally to Chinese only during these early years. If you are someone who is looking for resources to expose your little one to Chinese or any minority languages that I highlighted earlier, I highly recommend Bumo Brain's foreign language program. It's a well-made, age-appropriate, and highly engaging class. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And we will see you next time. Bye.